Hey everybody, Pastor Ryan, the roving giant here. We are parked at a nice little spot here in Lost Nation State Forest. Uh, coming out for a little bit of an afternoon hunt and trying out some gear. A uh, little winter hammock hanging. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be meeting up with Pastor Todd to do a little bit of squirrel hunting. He's deer hunting. I already got my deer for the year, but he's out deer hunting and I'm going to be squirrel hunting. And uh, this is not a hike. This is a camp trip. So we are hanging around camp. Going to enjoy some good food and uh, uh, just some nice time in the quiet snowy woods. I hope you enjoy it. Not to set up in this spot, but as you look up, right over there is a small little widow maker. But uh, I don't think this is the best spot. Let's see if we can find a better one. I think I found it. That tree right there, and that tree right over there. No widow makers. So we should be good. I'm loving the winter camping. Winter camping is always a real joy for me, especially when I get to be right near a beautiful creek like this. And um, I just thought since I'm taking my time, enjoying some of it, I'd show you some of my gear. I don't know, maybe you're interested, maybe not. You can skip it if you don't want to, whatever. Um, I got a webbing suspension here. Um, it's Kill Gorilla, they were cheap. It's just, I'm pretty sure it's just uh, Chinese mass made stuff, but it works just fine, it was cheap. I tie a uh, marlin spike hitch, but then what I do, instead of using a toggle, is I just put a big old loop through the marlin spike hitch. If you want me to show you that sometime, I will. Just leave a comment if you're interested, and I'll show you on the next video. Um, I'm using my Dutch bling, specifically my, uh, there's the focus. Um, my uh, wasp works great. Uh, got that tied around the tree to my homemade uh, winter hex tarp. I made it off of the ripstop by the roll thing, but added a couple of my own little modifications to it. I got a nice snake skin going across the top. Here's my roving giant hammock here with uh, the bags built into it, so the bag stays with it at all times, and it's attached using a Dutch uh, whoopee hook and a whoopee sling suspension attached to my tree strap. And now, for those of you who are new to hammock camping, who haven't done much hammock camping, these tree straps are a big deal. Um, you may not realize, you may think, what, what's the difference? It's just webbing, rope, whatever. If you're using rope on your tree, you are damaging the tree and potentially killing the tree. And we're actually, us hammock campers, are getting banned from a lot of state parks because of improper suspension. So if you are using rope, I'm just asking, Please consider changing to webbing. It is much better for the trees, and I'm sure if you're out here, you care about the trees too. Um, I, moving on to gear, I just attached this. This is a, a little, there you go, L.L. Bean uh, thermometer sensor. I, I thought it'd be fun to just see how cold it gets tonight, and that'll tell me. Um, continuing with the tour, uh, I got my Hammock Gear Incubator Zero Degree Under Quilt here. That under quilt's gonna keep me nice and toasty warm in this winter weather. And then a little Roving Giant original just gear hammock that kind of lays next to slash under the rest of my gear. Um, I, just a piece of zing it, uh, and, but this is kind of part of what makes my Roving Giant hammocks unique. This little thing here, this is the ridge line in the hammock. And for uh, experienced hammock campers, you know exactly what I'm talking about with the ridge line, but for any who are uh, new to it, the ridge line, what it does is it makes it so that hammock has just the right amount of sag. And we like having that sag there because having the sag lets you lay at a diagonal. 
laying at a diagonal, about a 15 degree diagonal is about where you want to be, um, and, a, and about a 30 degree sag. By having those angles right, you're able to lay at that angle and you're able to lay pretty darn flat. It's not perfectly flat, but it's flat enough to be comfortable and not feel like you're, uh, you know, doing your best banana impression all night. Um, and what makes my hammocks a little bit unique is that I have actually included a adjustable structural ridge line. So this ridge line here is made out of zingit, but it's adjustable. So if you like a little bit tighter lay or a little bit a little little more sag in that bag, then uh, you are able to adjust it to your heart's desire. Um, and I love this color green, this uh, this olive, <clears throat> and also included just with a couple little. I'm trying to remember what these little knots are called, but I'm pretty sure they are. Oh, come on, Ryan, you know this. Yep. We'll see if it comes to me later. It's not coming to me now, but you tie these little knots um, and it makes it so I can adjust that little bag right along the ridge line there. That little bag's just for holding my glasses or my cell phone, or in this case, my uh, thermometer to see how chilly it is out here. And that one's gonna tell me both how cold it is outside on that strap and how uh, warm it is inside my hammock situation. I just wanna see what the difference is. So I'll keep that thermo uh, that thermometer actually in my sleeping bag with me and see how warm is it in my sleeping bag at night and how cold is it outside of the whole setup at night. So yeah, that's just my quick rundown. And uh, I know you guys have seen the tarp before and uh, I think I'm gonna get that set up so that this beautiful blowing snow doesn't get my stuff all wet. to do something here so I want to show you you see that stake there there's my regular stake I normally I'm using these orange Coleman uh, lightweight aluminum stakes from Walmart but you see in the winter grounds frozen frozen solid <clears throat> um, but right now it's kind of early winter so the freeze isn't hard everywhere so my way around that is I bring some thicker stakes. I mean, they're really uh, heavy duty, pretty much a big, huge nail, probably about, I don't know, from my elbow to my sleeve size. And these nails will go right into the frozen ground and they'll hold that tarp in tight in the winter. I don't bother with them in the summer, they're, not, they're overkill. But in the winter, I tend to need them sometimes because this, the other stakes won't go on the ground. Uh, and this time was only one out of the four stakes needed to go on the ground. And <laughs> I want to share something that's like small, but <laughs> it's exciting to me. This whole setup here where I got to pull it out because there was a tree right there for me to tie it to is awesome. I, uh, <laughs> I don't always find good trees to tie out to, but this is what that does. It gives you all sorts of space in there. So right up on this side, I got all the room in the world to be able to, to hang. And you see how this side, it's a lot closer to the hammock. And what I'll do when I'm in here is I'm gonna tie out to that little tiny tree there so that this side wall comes out. And that'll give me plenty of space for hanging in my hammock and enjoying some quality hammock time. Another point of note, is that normally in the winter, I like to take the edge of this tarp and pitch it way down by the snow and seal it off, like actually build a bit of a snow wall up. Um, but I'm not gonna do that today. 
I want to see how things go. If it gets crazy out here, I can always pitch it down lower. I gotta drop the entire. Blah, I'm trying to make you sick. Uh, try to drop the entire hammock setup down. Uh, but <clears throat> the reason I have to do that sometimes is because, unlike rain, which goes down, 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 or even if it comes in at an angle and it goes down, it keeps going down until it hits the ground. Snow, on the other hand, is light enough that it swirls. And what will happen is the snow will come in under the side and then swirl all up around here and get all my insulation damp. Uh, and that we don't want because damp insulation means cold. Uh, and eh, I enjoy being out in the winter. I don't want to be cold while I'm sleeping. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to close up the doors in here, put the rest of my gear down under here, and then get the gun out and head out to see if I can't find Pastor Todd, maybe push a deer to him, maybe get a squirrel for dinner. Who knows? got my 20 gauge here, just 20 gauge shotgun, super simple. And then I've got just a pile of turkey shot, uh, just in case I see a squirrel or a pheasant, something else that would make a, a delicious dinner. But I got my tag on my back and we are ready to go. So far, not many tracks, but you see Pob out there in the distance. The two of us are gonna start walking and uh, see if we can't spook anything up. Well, we haven't seen anything yet. Um, Todd's just find a spot to sit, see if anything comes by. I'm going to make my way over to the camp and get the fire going, get some firewood set up before uh, I run out of daylight. Even though I didn't see a single thing moving the entire time I hunted there, that was just a really enjoyable walk in the woods. It is prime uh, winter camping weather right now. This is it doesn't get any better than this. It's about, it's a low 20s, so it's not that cold. It's not bitter cold to the point where any exposed skin hurts. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm not really dressed to the nines. I'm wearing a couple of layers to keep myself warm, but I'm wearing these finger gloves and my fingers are fine. I'm a little chilly, but not freezing, not uncomfortable. And uh, it's silent in the woods. There's a little bit of snow coming down that's just pretty. <laughs> uh, everything's nicely covered so it's not mud everywhere and man, can't ask for better than this. This is really pretty cool. I'm excited for uh, uh, the other guy to come. His name is Marty and I'll introduce you to him later in the video but uh, it'll be really cool to uh, show him. I'm not sure if he's been winter camping before. He said he's got all the gear that he needs. Um, and. Uh, yeah, show him the ropes. See how he uh, see how he likes it. <laughs> yeah. Well, time to find some firewood. I wasn't expecting to have an example to give you today, but it looks like somebody had uh, taken some wire and other stuff and hung a plastic tarp here sometime. I don't know how long ago. It's pretty uh, overgrown here, so it's probably a while ago. And voila. We have ourselves a dead tree. Uh, I don't know if this is what caused this tree to die, but this is the kind of stuff that you see. And this is why parks are not allowing hammock campers in, in a lot of the state parks, because they're worried about this. They're worried that you know, the straps are gonna kill the trees. Now, if you're using proper straps, if you're using at least three quarters, most likely one, one to be safe, one inch thick straps or one inch wide, it takes care of the surface area. It's, it's spreading all that weight and pressure over a larger area where wire or, um, or rope or paracord or something like that 
uh, tends to push it all on one individual point and that causes the damage to the tree. Um, also, this, this should go without saying, but don't put nails in the trees, don't put lag bolts and screws in the trees. Just, it's damaging the trees that are here for everybody. And we want to be able to share this space. This isn't just your space to use. And I, I know all you guys and gals uh, who are watching this know this stuff. I'm, uh, I'm just ranting. I'm sorry. But uh, soapbox over. <laughs> Got a venison jalapeno cheddar hot dog and Todd's back from hunting. How'd the hunt go, Todd? Uh, it's nice to sit in the woods, but didn't see anything. <laughs> that was what it was like for me too. <laughs> um, beautiful day though, light snow. Isn't it? I was, I was saying earlier that this is like the perfect winter camping weather. It's that low 20s, it's crisp enough that it's not all melty and wet, but not so cold that exposed skin hurts too bad. and. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we got the fire going. Todd's gonna have a hot dog before he heads out tonight and Marty just showed up. I'll introduce you to Marty in a little bit here once he gets his uh, whole tent situation set up. And yeah, uh, hopefully it'll be a, a nice, crisp, but comfortable night. Yeah, it's the third child. Didn't get to introduce you to Marty, but uh, that's okay. We'll introduce you in the morning around the breakfast fire. But um, the, there just wasn't enough light. We <laughs> couldn't see anything out here because it's pitch black, which is really cool because that's why we're out here for winter camping. It's to enjoy the cold, dark woods. But yeah, had some hot dogs over the fire, had some chatting, Todd headed home. But uh, Marty's all set up over there um, in his tent. Um, and yeah, uh, I'm just hunkering down, getting toasty warm in my hammock and in my under quilt and all my other nice, comfy, warm stuff. And thought I'd check in one last time. And <laughs> we will see y'all in the morning. Well, good morning everybody. We are up. It was a good night's sleep. Got a little chilly last night. Um, I actually got this uh, thermostat here and I was trying to see if it would tell me how warm or cold it was. It was <laughs> over 80 degrees inside my sleeping bag. Um, so, that was plenty toasty, uh, but it was, <clears throat> the coldest I saw it get was 14 outside last night, um,
but that 14 was, I'm pretty sure it got colder than that, but <clears throat> the cold killed the batteries on the thermostat before it hit its low. Um, so next time I guess I'll have to just try like lithium batteries or something. I'm, I think the batteries are just regular old alkalines, so I think that will make a difference. Um, and while I'm in here, before I get all the way up, <coughs> I want to, so, I want to show you that when you are out here at night, when, I mean, in the cold, it, uh, you get this, your, your, all that cold breath, you might not be able to see it on the camera, I'm not sure, but all that cold breath, it, uh, well, it finds places to hang out. Fortunately, my sleeping bag seems pretty dry, so no issues there, but um, as you see up here, that's all frosty. And the inside's all frosty from my breath, so. Um, some people don't want that to happen. They'd rather that frost go somewhere else, so they'll do something like they'll take this the ridge line and they'll hang a fleece bib down to their neck from there so all the frost gets caught on the fleece bib. But I roll around too much for that kind of stuff. <laughs> I choke myself in my sleep. But yeah. Well, I guess I gotta get up now. This is the hard part. I think it is time to uh, collect a little bit of extra firewood and get a fire started so that we can stay nice and toasty this morning. Uh, it seems that Marty is still asleep in his tent over there between here and the truck. And yeah, man, it is a beautiful morning this morning. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> So, when you're working on a fire, <coughs> if you haven't heard it from all the other people on YouTube that tell you, um, fire needs three things. It needs oxygen, it needs fuel, and it needs heat. So this fire's got plenty of heat, it's got plenty of nice big fuel, 
and there's plenty of oxygen because you can see how there's gaps between the logs. Those gaps between the logs are helping the fire to stay alive really well. And uh, so this is a nice hot burning fire and having the flames go down isn't the only thing that tells you that the fire is dying. Um, other things that identify the fire that's not as healthy as it could otherwise be are things like uh, smoke. smoke. A smoky fire is either a wet fire or a smothered fire. So if, if the logs are all packed on really tight and there's nowhere for it to breathe, it'll get smoky. If the stuff's wet, it'll get smoky. Now, in the winter when it's snowing, there's going to be a smokiness <laughs> to every fire that you do because snow's wet. But um, you try to keep it down as much as you can by having a nice, efficient fire. Well, everybody, just finished breakfast. We got the fire going, and I wanted to introduce you guys to Marty. Hello. And uh, I thought I'd let him give you the two cents on how, <laughs> how his first night in the snow was. What would you think? Oh, it was a wonderful experience. It was, it was the best that could happen out here. Trying to stay warm is a tough thing, but if you're successful, it can be a, a good joy. Yeah, it's tough to stay warm. You said your cold, your toes got real cold. Yeah, it's good to keep a little extra. Uh, a metal canteen heated in the fire with full of water always can help. Um, there's a lot of things you can think of. Yeah. Coming out here trying to stay. Yeah. So it's it's. It's fun to get your first experience, so don't be afraid to go out. Like, even if you're not 100% prepared, don't go out when it's too cold, but if you are if you have a little bit of initiative and a little bit of ability to just suck it up, Amen. Yeah. <laughs> you can you can do a lot more than you think you can. Yes, so you can do it. It's so we're gonna kinda take our time here. We finished eating breakfast. We're gonna pack up, hang around the fire, maybe even walk around a little bit, but uh, that this is probably the end of what's gonna be on the video. So until next time, uh, so long, stay curious, and yeah, we'll see you on the next trip.